All right, it's Hank. I find it enormously irritating that I have to go through this, but I will. And, um, well, this is about um, solar dynamics and, um, and uh, electromagnetics in relationship to the Earth and why the sun, the metals that move within the Earth, and uh, the, the changing pole shift changes things, you know, in the world. And behind me is, well, it's just cosmology, which, frankly, there's no point in going over this. We can go over cosmology and how to time shift later. But for today, we'll go over something a little more basic. All right. Now, imagine this. You have the sun not so difficult to imagine. And the sun is really nothing more than a giant um, radiating electromagnet. If you want to think of light as a wave, which it is, um, there you have it, okay? Now, it is a radiating wave on a certain bandwidth. Now that certain bandwidth, and this, bright blue ball, will represent the Earth, okay? Now, the sun, is radiating into the earth like so and like so I mean like so all the way through you have the crust here and let's say here okay and you have a molten iron core, okay, which is a little bit bigger than that. This is not to scale. This is only representative. Okay. So inside the earth, you have pockets of, um, let's call it, um, let's call it a magnetic, um, uh, that would probably be the best thing. It's just, it's just, um, material that is magnetic, all right? So you basically have the crust and inside the crust you have, inside is the mantle zone, and inside the mantle zone you have things that are like a magnetic metal because, you know, a magnet is a, a magnet thing. I mean, a, a metal is a magnet and a, a magnet is a metal. And when you charge it, you have an electromagnet, okay? So it's basically you have pockets of material that are sort of magnetic and then other pockets of material that are extremely magnetic. So it's kind of like if you're to take one type of material, say copper, and rub it against a magnet, will it, will that copper magnetize the same way if you rub, like say, a paperclip across, okay? You get two different types of, of um, strength or magnetic strength out of those two different types of materials. So you have different types of materials going on the earth, some are which very magnetic, some are which not magnetic. Obviously the magnetic materials are going to want to coalesce, okay? And then you end up with poles. So hopefully I'm not getting ahead of myself here. So imagine the inside of the earth being like a lava lamp, okay? Lava lamp. Okay. Not to scale, but you have different sorts of like plumes of this material on the inside, kind of going up towards the surface. Which, and when you spin a magnet, 
you get a magnetic field. Okay. Pretty simple stuff here. So this might be my magnetic, and this is an oversimplification because there's actually four poles, but neither here nor there. So this would be my magnetic north, my magnetic south. And because the inside of the earth is charged, it creates a magnetic field. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Now, sun comes in, heats the electromagnet, and over time, the magnetic poles with this lava lamp stuff moving around in here, these magnetic fields are eventually given the repulsi repulsing effect of a magnetic field or the materials inside of the earth around its iron core, molten iron core. Probably not molten, I think it's actually solid, but <laughs> who really, who really knows? Okay, so eventually these things are gonna move. Okay, they're gonna move and they're gonna create a new magnetic field. And right now, we are in the process of these magnetic fields moving, all right? Because the Earth radiates, boom, hits the lava lamp, heats it up, charges the magnetic field, which is spinning inside of the Earth, or charging the magnetic uh, molten materials inside of the Earth, creating this magnetic field And, well, it's going to shift. Now, when that shifts, and as it's shifting now, the magnetic field is moving with it, sort of in a strange way, as it's taking on these new different types of, this new different type of waveform energy here. So, we're catching more of this incoming solar radiation. Okay, this incoming solar radiation is not blocked by these stable magnetic fields. At the moment, these magnetic fields are not stable, okay? So that's going to heat the water, heat the oceans. You've got also the magnetic material moving around on the inside, which is moving the other material around on the inside. It stays hot because it is a lava lamp, essentially. And that lava lamp is going to force the undersea volcanoes and the volcanoes above the sea um, to, well, explode because, you know, there's plate pressures and all kinds of other stuff moving around because around you got a lava lamp going around underneath the earth, okay? Very simple stuff. Well, eventually, this stuff is going to move real quick because lava lamps, they do. You know, you see them get to a certain point and boom, it's going to move a little bit. Well, that's what we're going to have here. And then the poles shift. So what does that mean? Basically, it means you have incoming solar radiation that's going to <laughs> basically be pretty strong there for a little while. And it's not going to end all life on Earth. It's going to end a lot. There's no question about that. Um, but, um, well, that's mostly just because nobody wants to tell you. I think probably because most people, I, I think, are considered a problem it's easy to understand why so i don't know it's neither really here nor there it's not a decision that i make i just figure out what it is and i tell you um when it comes to air currents and convection currents and all that different stuff i can outline a model for you that might make some sense as to what's happening what's going to happen um well that's it on on magnetics and solar dynamics, pretty simple stuff. It's been Hank.